All right, let's take a look at a few problems now where instead of trying to find a missing side length, we're trying to find a missing angle. So for the first one of these, um, we're trying to find what z is if the cosine of z equals 0 0.8090. And now I'm going to do this um, in two ways here. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the proper mathematical way, and then I'll show you uh, the quick and dirty way that you will most likely end up using. So in order to find out what z is, we have to undo the fact that we're taking the cosine of z. Cosine is a function. It's something we're doing to z to get this value. So we need to undo uh, doing the cosine of z. And the way we do that is to use a function called the inverse cosine. And it's written like this. So that means the inverse cosine. And then I'm going to do that to the cosine of z, which looks a little strange, but bear with me. And if I do something to one side of an equation, I gosh darn better do it to the other. So I also need to take the inverse cosine of 0 0.8090. And so now let's look at what this does. The inverse cosine undoes doing the cosine of something. So uh, where I'm taking the cosine of z and then the inverse cosine of z, that basically leaves z just by itself. So that gives me only z on that side of the equation. And then to calculate the inverse cosine, all I have to do is take a handy dandy calculator. And you'll notice written in blue above cosine is the inverse cosine. So if I hit second cosine, the calculator will bring up the inverse cosine. And then I just have to plug my value in. So I substitute that in for the argument of that function and hit enter, and it tells me that the inverse cosine of that is rounding off 36 degrees. Also make sure your calculator is in degree mode, otherwise this will not work. So again, all I did was I took the inverse cosine to undo taking the cosine there, and that works for any of the trig functions. We can have an inverse sine function or an inverse tangent function, um, whichever is needed for the situation. All right, let's take a look now at number eight. Number eight asks us to find the measure of the indicated angle to the nearest degree. And so I'm going to look and see what information I have on this. And I have, for this angle, the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse. So that means I'm free to use any of the trig functions that I want. I'm kind of partial to the sine function myself. So I'll say that the sine of theta, and we don't know what theta is, we're not sure. The sine of theta is equal to, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite of this angle would be 32, and the hypotenuse would be opposite the right angle, which is 68. And so I've set up this, that the sine of theta is 32 over 68. Now in order to figure out what theta is, I have to take the inverse sine of both of these. And I'm writing this out. You will probably get to the point where you stop writing it out exactly like this, but it's good practice initially. So when I take the inverse sine of the sine of theta, I'm left with just theta because these two undo each other. And over here, I simply need to make the calculation where I'm taking the inverse sine of 32 divided by 68. And I find that that is uh, 28.072. I'm to round to the nearest degree. So that's 28. The 0 means I'm going to keep it there. So theta is equal to 28 degrees. And so again, we're solving this using the inverse trig function, the function that undoes the trig function. All right, well, let's take one last look at uh, this with number nine. So in number nine, I'm asked to find this unknown angle. I apologize for cutting that off there, but I want to know this unknown angle, but I'm only given this particular information. I'm given the opposite 
and the adjacent. I do not know the hypotenuse. So whatever trig function I pick, that trig function needs to only contain theta, the opposite, and the adjacent, because that's all I know. Well, I know the tangent function is opposite over adjacent. If you think SOCA TOA, uh, TOA, T-O-A, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So our opposite is 34. Our adjacent is 36. And so I know that the tangent of theta, whatever theta may be, is 34 over 36. Now if I take the inverse tangent of both sides, I'm going to be left with theta equals the inverse tangent of 34 over 36. Now I actually need to make that calculation. So I'll say the inverse tangent of 34 divided by 36. And I'm to round this to the nearest degree, so that would be 43 degrees. And you can actually check this, if you'd like, by saying the tangent of 43 and figuring out what that is, and then taking 34 divided by 36 and those answers should be very, very close together if you've done this properly. And you can see, because we did round off that 43, they're not exact, but they are close, which tells us that we were in the ballpark, particularly for rounding to the nearest degree.